We thank God this is the day that the Lord has made. We welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church. Let's get our Facebook folks all set up now as we start this great and powerful ministry. So glad to see so many of you on. Some of my favorite people are on here today. I see, now we shouldn't have favorites, but I see my son Wes on there. Hey, Wes, Marisol, and your family. I see my main man, Matt Borland from Erie, Pennsylvania. Matt, God bless you and Ashley and your family. Praise God. I see my friend and classmate, Dr. Andrew McBride from Milford, Connecticut online. And I see many, many others. And I just thank God. Good morning to all of you. Let me make sure we're on on Facebook. Greetings to our Facebook Live family. Greetings to you. This is Pastor Leroy Carter of the Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated Online Church, the church that's making the difference in many, many lives. You say, well, <clears throat> this is not really a church. I mean, it's like an online thing. Yeah, but you know, wherever two or more of us are gathered in the name of Jesus, there he is in the midst of us, and we call it a church. You can call it what you want, but I'm going to call this a church because there are more than two of us gathered, and we gather in the name of Jesus. As we gather, may his spirit work within us. As we gather, may the spirit of the Lord work work within us. I thank God that you have taken time out from your busy schedule to worship the Lord. It doesn't matter where you worship. David said, if I make my uh, bed in hell, you're there, Lord God. If I rise to the uttermost parts of the, wi of the, of the earth, if I take wings and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, there you are, Lord. So wherever you are, God is and as two of us gather together, we constitute a church. It may not be the brick and mortar church. Hey, praise God. Amen. If you couldn't make it out to the brick and mortar church, that's all right. Thank God that you're here at the online church. We have church, ladies and gentlemen, as we used to say in Chester, Pennsylvania, us having church. Us having church, ladies and gentlemen. Us is having church. We's having church. Amen. Church is not all about the choir and the praise team and the ushers and the flamboyant preacher and the beautiful cars out in the parking lot and the flowers uh, surrounding the building. That, that's not church. That's, that's decorating your building. That's filling your building. But church means uh, doing what Jesus said. He said, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There are people sitting up in brick and mortar buildings. They're looking pretty. They put on all their paint on their faces today, their makeups, their fine clothes. They sprayed something uh, uh, to make them smell good. And they're pitifully lost, ladies and gentlemen. Some are lost in pride. Some are pompous and puffed up and uh, don't know Jesus. They think that participating in a dwelling place at a certain time, usually uh, 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, means that they're in church. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in a building. You must be born again to be in the church. And when you're born again, the Spirit of God comes alive in you. There's only one way to be born again. You must confess the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him by faith. And then the Holy Spirit comes to live in you and he will guide you. And some of you, there is no brick and mortar church where you can go and be properly fed. Some of you are fed up with the brick and mortar church. We started the online church three years ago. The Holy Spirit said, start the back to basics online church for people who uh, are are frustrated with the church, people who've been burnt by the church, people who just get so sick and tired of sitting up in church and ain't nothing happening, people who get tired of the parade and the fashion show and the same old, same old, hey, look, I got sick and tired of it too. 
I withdrew from it. But I thank God that he has a ministry, ladies and gentlemen. This is just one of many ministries God has where people like you and me can gather together, people like my friend Matt Borland in Erie, Pennsylvania, my son Wes Carter in uh, Pennsville, New Jersey, and Andy McBride in Milford, Connecticut, and Linda Barrett up in Pennsylvania, uh, people in California, people in Illinois, people in Georgia, people in Florida, my friend Larry Cooper in Tampa, Florida, Florida. I thank God that there is a place where you can come and feel comfortable. You're not judged by what you're wearing. You're not judged by what kind of vehicle you drove up to in, in the parking lot. In, uh, you're not concerned about uh, how people look at you, uh, uh, how they try to see how much money you put in the offering. We don't even take an offering, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> this is a church where we don't even ask for money. So you know that there's something special, something, something, something special about the Back to Basics online church. We don't even ask for money. Praise God. We believe that if the Spirit of God touches you, he's going to direct you where to send your tithes and your offerings. And we want you to be faithful to tithe and offer uh, uh, unto God. So we just bless God. We just praise God. We just thank God. Uh, Matt Borland says in the chat window, your true character is when you are by yourself with the Lord. Amen. Amen, Matt. Amen to that. Your true character comes forth when you are alone and by yourself with the Lord. Do you worship him? Do you praise him? Do you thank him? Do you tell him you're satisfied with your situation? Do you worship him no matter what's going on? A lot of people are sitting up in church today, ladies and gentlemen. They came in angry, came in puffed up, came in with offenses in them, came in angry with somebody, and they're going to leave the same way. And the gospel will not touch them one bit. Why? Because they have no heart for Jesus. They have a heart for church. And there's a big difference between going to church and having a heart for Jesus. And where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So we welcome you. We welcome you to the online church. We welcome you. We want you to know that here at the online church, everybody is somebody. I don't know you all. I may never get to meet you, but I love you and I praise God. And what you see is what you get. What you see here in front of you, if you're online, this is what you get. Uh, praise God. I'm a sinner saved by grace, saved by the grace of God. I don't boast in anything I've ever done. It's the grace of God that has saved me and brought me to this point. You can dig in my background. You can turn over a lot of dirt. Or if you really want to know some dirt, you call me and ask me. I'll give it to you. But the beautiful thing is I'm saved. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. The scripture says that if any man, any woman is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So whatever is back there in the past, it's old. It is passed away. Old, all things are become new. And it's the same in your life. You've got to get this, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to get the fact that your life is new. It's been changed by the Spirit of God. And, and you've got to rejoice in, in the fact that God doesn't have a record on you. He doesn't uh, have a pile up of your offenses. He has cleaned the slate. He is, if you've confessed your sins, there's no evidence in God's record book that you've ever done anything. So rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of people who are attending churches today, who, who think that because they appear in the building that something magical is going to happen, like uh, two Alka-Seltzers, pop, pop, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. It don't work like that, ladies and gentlemen. You, there's no magical formula that when you walk in the church doors, when you walk through the church doors, that something magical is going to happen, and all of a sudden, you're brand new. No, no, no. You must be born again 
by the Spirit of God. And if you've got anything in you that's not of God, you've got to repent. You've got to confess it before God. And the same here. If you think that you can hide in the online church because we don't know you, we don't see you, you still have to face Jesus. Matt Borland says your true character is when you are by yourself with the Lord. And when you're by yourself with the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, if God reveals that there's sin in your life, confess it, repent of it, and ask the Holy Spirit to deliver you. Don't continue in sin. Romans 6, chapter 1, and verses 2, 1 and 2 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God is not going to give you grace. He's not going to continue pouring out his grace. If you deliberately live in sin and you know that you need to repent, but you're going to keep on walking in it. That's why uh, 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 people who are not married, uh, the Holy Spirit will bring you under conviction. And, and there are people who are not married who are Christians. But the Holy Spirit will bring you to a place, hey, you've got to get married. You've got to honor that woman. You've got to honor that man. You've got to honor those children. And I know people who are honoring God by doing this. We don't condemn them. We encourage them. If if you're a drug dealer and you know, I mean, you might be the pastor. I know pastors who have been drug dealers and were dealing drugs from the pulpit. Ladies and gentlemen, because you're the pastor of the church, does not give you the liberty to sell drugs from your pulpit. If you're running with somebody else's wife and you can be preaching the gospel and running with someone else's wife, sleeping with somebody else's woman, ladies and gentlemen, you need to repent. You can't hide. God's going to peep you. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't fool God. You can't fool the Holy Spirit. And so the online church, we reach out. We reach out to a lot of people who don't uh, uh, go to church. We reach out to a lot of people who are hiding at home on Sunday mornings. I know a lot of people, uh, they feel under conviction between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock p.m. That's black folks uh, church time in America, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, uh, many other churches go from 11 to 12 or 10 to 11. But most black people I know, I mean, between 11 and 1 those who don't go to church, you know what they do? They find some activity where they can hide. They don't want any emails. They don't want any text messages. They don't want any phone calls. They don't want to uh, do anything with religion because they know they're running from God and hiding from God. But, you know, something magical happens. I know because I used to live this way at 1 o'clock p.m. Oh, the cloud is lifted. The black cloud list. I know I can get a witness in the chat room. I know I can get a witness that at one o'clock p.m. in most communities in America, the, the cloud lifts and you can go outside. You can wash your car. You can go to the park. You can go to the mall. But between 11 o'clock in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon, something comes over you. You're like, in paralysis. You're like in fear. You don't want any phone calls because it might be the preacher. You don't want a phone call because it might be somebody witnessing. You don't want to, uh, anybody knocking on your door. It might be the Jehovah's Witnesses. You don't want anybody disturbing you during your two hours of pity and running from God. But ladies and gentlemen, in the online church, we take away, we blow away the excuse of not going to church. Ladies and gentlemen, and you can't say, well, those people always asking for money on the online church. We don't ask for your money. Keep your money. If you don't want to give freely, we don't want your money. We don't want you giving grudgingly. God loves a cheerful giver. And if you have tithes and offerings to offer, we're not going to turn down your tithes and offerings, but we don't put the bag on you like they do in a lot of places. So, ladies and gentlemen, the online church, it's a new paradigm, a new way of thinking about the church and a new way of doing things that God is doing to let you know that he loves you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are so important to God. He does not want you staying at home, rotting in despair, rotting in self-pity, being convicted, feeling like you don't count. You don't matter to anybody or anything. Ladies and gentlemen. We just praise God for you. My friend Matt Borland just said, put in the chat window. It filled his heart, he said, to ask his fiance to marry him. 
I commend you, Matt. I commend, I commend you, Matt. Matt, you are a great man. I hope you get to meet my son, Wes. Uh, you two are great men. Uh, meet Andy McBride. He's a great man because you guys uh, uh, know when things aren't right and the spirit of God moves upon you, you do what is right. I would rather be around folks like you who do what is right than to be around a lot of these phonies who ain't never done anything wrong and who are living these fantasy lives where they have people fooled, duped, believing that they're so holy, so much holier than others. So we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus. I thank God for you sisters out there. You are precious ladies, precious women. We love you. We honor you. We respect you. I thank God for the children online. I thank God for the Facebook family. Thank God for our friends in the international community. We've got people online live right now in Africa, in Kenya, Botswana, Rwanda, uh, Uganda, and a lot of other people, uh, nations in Africa. We have people in Europe online live watching this uh 45 minute program. We've got people in South America, North at North America. We've got people watching. We've got people on the Facebook family and I greet you Facebook family. I thank you that you've taken time out to listen. Praise God. Amen. It's not all about going to church. It's about being in the presence of the Lord. We ought to take time out every day to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. That's what all this preaching is all about, that you be in the presence of the Lord and that you honor God, honor God, honor him all the day long, every day. Worship him. No matter what your situation is, worship God. No matter what your situation is, thank God. And so we praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Some of you today need some joy. You need some peace. You say, well, Pastor Carter, you're always smiling. Is that smile real? Hey, Matt, I had somebody come up to me years ago and, and put their finger in my mouth and say, are they your real teeth? Because <laughs> you grin all the time. I, are they your real teeth? I said, yeah, they're my real teeth. Now get your finger out of my mouth. <laughs> People are a trip, Matt. People are a trip. Yes, these are my real teeth, and I smile. I like to smile because, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. There are times I don't feel like getting out of bed. Hey, I'm, I'm real. Dr. McBride, I'm real, man. Sometimes this arthritis will be kicking, man. It's kicking. But there are times I don't want to get out of bed. But I say, oh, no, 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 no. Greater is he in me than he that's in the world. Some of you need to know how to pump yourself up to get out of bed, how to pump yourself up, how to get to your prayer room and pump yourself up to get in a place where you can talk to God. Start each day praising God, talking with him, asking him to guide you, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you. Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I praise God. I thank God. I thank God for all of you. Praise God. Now, that's my introduction. I've got about 15 more minutes for my sermon. So we're going to take a look today. Uh, it's a different sermon, something I've never done before, but the Lord said do this. Facebook family, we're going to take a look at a tribute to Dr. Reverend Billy Graham. My subject is going to be thanks, Billy Graham. Thanks, Billy Graham. No, don't don't turn the channel. Don't uh, flip to anyone else. I believe this message is going to bless you. There's a purpose for the Lord giving me as I sought him <clears throat> for a message. There's a purpose why he says, thank Billy Graham. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you, bless you, and worship you. We exalt you, extol you, adore you. There's no other God but you, Lord. There is no other God but you. Lord, I thank you that today on the online church, I'm surrounded by people who love you. People from all walks of life, many who have issues, many who have problems. Some even think that they have been forgotten, but I thank you that you have not forgotten any one of us. I thank you, Lord, that you have surrounded me by uh, uh, people from all across the board, 
well-known people and people who are less known. But I thank you that you know each one of us and you know our needs. And I thank you that you are so wonderful, Lord, that you're willing to supply every need. Lord, we praise you. We lift up our, our trucker friend. He drives an 18-wheeler. Uh, we lift up Ryan Trogler, that you'll bless him. Give him safe travels as he travels the highways on the interstates. Give him, him and the drivers and the truckers uh, traveling grace. Bless his son who's in a, a burn center in South Carolina. Lord, heal that young man. And Lord God, uh, we lift up the family of uh, the Heasters in central Pennsylvania. Uh, Mr. Heaster was run over by a truck and he's dead. We ask that you bless his family. We know, Father, there are people who are online today whose hearts are broken, whose hearts are heavy. Some are unemployed. Some are uh, facing sickness. Some are facing job layoffs. Some don't know where to turn, but I thank you that on the online church, they can meet you, Lord God. I thank you. So, Father, I thank you for counting me worthy of this calling. I thank you for surrounding me with men and women who love you. Lord, keep us humble, God. Rebuke the spirit of pride. Let us know that we're all in this love thing together. Help us to love one another and to encourage one another. We thank you for the spirit of encouragement that you have enabled us and are enabling us to encourage one another. And so we ask that you bless this message today and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say amen. Well, this is an unusual sermon for me today and is much different than what I usually do. And it's a tribute to Reverend Billy Graham. Already, already, I know uh, some of you folks on Facebook and some of you folks out there on the website and uh, some of you folks in the international community uh, want to turn me off because uh, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to uh, encourage. I'm going to bless the career, the ministry of a brother uh, whose skin is different from mine. I am not a racist, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you're not either. And we need to get off this color thing. It sickens my heart to see so many of my black brothers and sisters who don't want to listen to white preachers. It sickens my heart to see so many uh, white brothers and sisters who don't want to listen to black preachers. It's gotten to the point in this nation and this world today that if, if you're not black, I don't want to hear from you. Or if you're not white, I don't want to hear from you. That is divisive, ladies and gentlemen. It's also racist. And I don't care how much you claim you're born again. But my scripture teaches me that if I regard iniquity in my heart, God won't even hear me. So all across the board, we need to repent. I know a lot of black people need to repent. I know a lot of white people need to repent. See, God is not a man, a, a God of color. He made us all after his image. He made different races after his image. The beautiful thing is God made people who look so differently, but who have the same Holy Spirit in them when they receive Jesus Christ. And God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. He loves everybody. And, and so, I mean, this, this thing, this color thing in America is sickening. It will make you puke. It'll make you want to regurgitate. And I just get so sick and tired of pastors, black preachers, who hate white people. I get sick and tired of, of white people who hate black people. It's sickening, ladies and gentlemen, and I take a stand against it. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't be here today if it were not for kind-hearted white people who helped me and my family, who helped my mother and father during those times of when they were trying to raise us kids. It, it was kind people, whites and blacks, who have helped me. And I passed that legacy on to my children. I taught them uh, about how people were kind to us, all, all kinds of people. Ladies and gentlemen, love comes in all different colors, ladies and gentlemen. And, and if you withdraw yourself from somebody because you don't like what color they are, you are a sad, pathetic individual. If you withdraw yourself from preachers because they're not 
uh, the color of a preacher. You want them to be like, you are sad, you are sick, you are pathetic, you need to repent. I had brothers in the seminary. Ladies and gentlemen, I had brothers in the seminary, in the seminary, who whenever a white preacher would come to seminary, they would not attend seminary. They were pitiful, and they would get angry with me because I was always in chapel. I didn't care who was preaching, man, woman. I didn't care what color they were because I'm the kind of person, I believe this, from the time I gave my heart to Jesus, I believe that if God has sent someone to preach a word to me, I have the responsibility to honor God in that person and listen. And ladies and gentlemen, so many people in America, so many people all over the world are missing their blessings. Ladies and gentlemen, many people are going to bust hell wide open because of their racism, their hard heartedness. Ladies and gentlemen, because they could not be taught by a person of a different color. My seminary classmates used to hate my guts. They said, Lee, you ought to stop going to church, uh, chapel. You, you get, don't you get tired of those white preachers? Ladies and gentlemen, it was due to many white preachers that I am here today. Come on now. It is due to many kind-hearted white preachers that I'm here today. I remember one day after chapel that I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I had to travel back to my home. I didn't have a car. I was taking the bus. I spent the last 35 cents I had to buy a, a bus token. Now, that was back in the day. And I didn't have any way back home. I lived miles away from where I was going to seminary. And so I just, I went to chapel. I was probably the only black student in the chapel that day because we had a white preacher. And, and but see, I made up my mind. I, I'm going to honor God no matter what vessel he blows through. Uh, whatever pipe he chooses to blow through, I'm going to honor him and I'm going to receive that person. I'm going to respect that person God sends. And I remember sitting there after chapel was over all by myself. I had a class to attend, but I didn't attend the class. I sat there and I prayed and I was, I was praying quietly. And I said, Lord, I don't have any money to get home. I don't even have lunch money. I don't even know what my family's going to eat tonight. But, Lord, you sent me to seminary, and you sent me to get prepared for the gospel ministry. So I'm just uh, laying this out before you, Father. I don't know what to do, um, and I need some help. And I barely finished my prayer, ladies and gentlemen, when a hand reached over my shoulder, and an old white gentleman, one of our professors, one of our professors, a white man, he reached over and put a $20 bill in my hand and he walked away. Ladies and gentlemen, I praise God, I thank God to this day for kind people, regardless of what race they are. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ comes in all forms, all bodies, all colors. When, when a person is born again, you shall know them by their fruits. And so all this leads up, leads up to me saying, I thank God for Reverend Billy Graham. What a powerful preacher. What a mighty man of God. Now, we do not idolize Billy Graham, and we do not idolize everyone. But I think America and the whole world owes a tribute to Reverend Billy Graham. And uh, here are a few reasons why. Billy Graham was called by the Lord. He was saved at the age of 16. At 16 years old, he knew his life was to be spent serving the Lord and preaching the gospel. He lived to be 99 years old. He just died this past week, 99 years old. So for 83 years, he was in ministry, ladies and gentlemen. And the beautiful thing is that he preached the gospel for over 80 years. He was steady. He was steadfast. The thing I love about Dr. Graham is that he was steady and he was steadfast. I remember back in the 50s, back in the 60s, I turned the TV on. Billy Graham would be preaching. A lot of people would not want to watch Billy Graham because he was white, but I watched him. Not only did I watch him, but I 
listen to what was coming out of his mouth. And ladies and gentlemen, for all of the years since the 1950s, hearing Billy Graham preach, he was consistent. He preached Jesus Christ. He preached the gospel. He loved people no matter what they were or who they were. He was steady and consist consistent, and he was true to God. And some of my uh, uh, black friends will say, well, you know, he was a racist. He's from the South. Ladies and gentlemen, I rebuke that thought. I cast down that vain imagination. God has raised up people from all over this nation and filled them with the Holy Ghost, and they have transcended racist lines and have been faithful to God. Ladies and gentlemen, as we, as we celebrate Black History Month, I want to remind my black friends that when Dr. Martin Luther King was arrested and thrown in the Birmingham jail, it was not Ralph Abernathy. It was not Harry Belafonte. It was not the rich black folks who bailed him out of jail. It was Reverend Billy Graham, ladies and gentlemen, who raised the money to pay the bail to get Dr. King out of jail. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to uh, uh, honor people who, who transcend racist lines and, and do what is right and do what Christ says to do. And ladies and gentlemen, when uh, uh, the South African government, the South African government uh, uh, persisted in apartheid, they built a wall between whites and blacks, and they tried to keep uh, continue <clears throat> holding black people in Africa, South Africa as slaves. It was Reverend Billy Graham, along with people like my pastor, Gus Roman, and his pastor, Reverend Leon Sullivan, who took a stand and said, <clears throat> we're going to tear down apartheid. And Reverend Billy Graham, who preached in 185 different nations, told the people of South Africa, I refuse to preach and run any crusades in your country as long as you still have apartheid seating. But when you integrate the seating and allow blacks to come into the meetings, I will come and preach in your country. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it's taken people of great guts and great courage and great love for the Lord and great love for mankind. Men like Billy Graham who have made uh, 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 Christianity a strong, a strong faith. <clears throat> and so we commend him today. We don't idolize him, but we commend him. Billy Graham exemplified a love for all people. He never begged for money. Never, never, never on TV do you see Dr. Graham begging for money. He raised offerings. That's how the ministry was able to uh, progress because of the kind gifts of people who generously gave to the ministry. You see, when people see a ministry that is vibrant, that is live, that is faithful, that is just, that's honest, that's pure, they're going to give to it. And I thank God for those of you who give to this ministry. We don't have to put the bag on you when you know that you know that what the ministry is all about is glorifying God and, and magnifying Jesus Christ, you'll give. And so we thank God for your giving. But Billy Graham never begged for money. He never had a blessed plan. He never had a packet, uh, 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 a monthly packet that he sold to people for their offerings. He went about preaching the gospel. He didn't care what color his audience was. What he saw was souls in need of Jesus Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, all across America, all across the world, look at people as souls in need of Jesus Christ. No, not in need of Allah. Allah cannot save them. Buddha cannot save them. No, Wall Street cannot save them. No, money cannot save them. No, the large corporations cannot save them. No, the Republican Party cannot save them. No, the Democratic Party cannot save them. They can only be saved through Jesus Christ. And so we highlight Billy Graham today. And as his uh, funeral procession, 
as Ed Hurst drives from Charlotte, North Carolina, through Asheville, and uh, down through parts of North Carolina, coming up into Virginia, on the way to the state capitol, where Billy Graham will lay in state uh, for several days this coming week, and his funeral will be Friday. We ask that you take time and salute the man of God. Salute the man of God who, for over 80 years, was faithful. He didn't change. His message remained the, cha remained the same. And even though the nation changed, even though the winds of racism blew in this nation, you have a man who stood on the power of the gospel. See, the gospel is not a political movement. The gospel is not a cultural movement. The gospel is not a color thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we've seen movements come, we've seen movements go, but the gospel makes a person stand consistently and steadfastly on the word of God. And when you're truly, truly, truly born again by the spirit of God, it doesn't matter to you what color people are. It doesn't matter to you what kind of house or what kind of shack or what kind of pallet they lay on uh, under a bridge. You see souls that God breathed his breath in and they became living beings. You see souls that Jesus died on the cross to save. And so I, we salute Billy Graham and we salute preachers all over this nation and all over this world. We salute the real preachers. We salute the real Christians. We salute the real witnesses, men and women who don't care what color you are. They're going to love you for who you are. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Billy Graham did that. I intend to do that. Wow, it'd be great if I can live to be 99 years old and still standing on the promises of God and still preaching a steadfast gospel. Amen. Where where I'm not wavering. Some people waver. They're like a a, a a reed blowing in the wind. You don't know what side they're on. You don't know what uh, side of the bed your preacher wakes up on in the morning. But give me a steadfast Holy Ghost filled preacher, man or woman. I don't care if you're man or woman, but if you're steady, you're consistent. Your diet is the word of God. Uh, the fruits that come forth out of you are from the Holy Spirit. You're the kind of person I want to hang out with. Ladies and gentlemen, be steadfast. Get your life built on a solid foundation. Facebook family, get a solid foundation. Get away from this racism. Get away from this hatred. Shut down those people who uh, want you to promote hatred and racism. Ladies and gentlemen, shut down those folks who want to bash uh, your president. They have nothing good to say about him. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you get rid of him, you might have something worse. You need to pray for the man who's in the White House. You need to pray for the one God has ordained to lead. The Bible says, obey those who are in rule. Obey those who have authority over us. And I don't care how much Jesus you have in you, how much Holy Ghost you got in you. If you're promoting hatred, if you're promoting division, if you're uh, promoting uh, 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 political polarization, if you're promoting racism, then you need to repent and go back to God and get saved. I'm not judging you. I'm a preacher. I preach it. I tell it like it is. And I let the Holy Spirit bring forth the results. So, ladies and gentlemen, we all need to check ourselves. Are you saved? Or are you a church member? It's a big difference. A lot of folks are sitting up in church now. They think they're saved. Well, I joined church when I was 13 years old. I got baptized when I was 10. My mother built the church. My daddy was founded this church. Ladies and gentlemen, that has nothing to do with your salvation. The word of God says, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. This is the gospel that Jesus preached. 
This is the gospel that Billy Graham preached. This is the gospel that Leroy Carter preaches. This is the gospel that Wes Carter preaches. This is the gospel that Andy Mack preaches. This is the gospel uh, that Tammy Nichols preaches. This is the gospel that Matt Borland preaches. This is the gospel. It doesn't change. Don't waver. Don't, don't change your position uh, uh, when governments change. Don't change your position because uh, uh, there's money in favor if you align yourself with this group. No, no. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Well, I know some of you say, well, you're too religious, Leroy Carter. Oh, no, no. All contrary. All contrary. To the opposite. I ain't religious enough. My faith, my faith, my faith needs to grow in Christ. See, you don't know like I knew. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know the pits he's brought me from. You don't know uh, the dangers seen and unseen that Jesus has brought me from. But I know, hallelujah, and I know that my Redeemer lives like Job. I know that my Redeemer lives and I shall see him in the latter day. And I am determined that nothing will separate me from the love of God. Ladies and gentlemen, be determined. Number one, get saved. Be determined to stay saved. And be determined that nothing, nobody, nothing is going to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. For we're living in the last days. The scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, perilous times will come. It's worse than ever before, and it's going to get worse. And unless your house is built on a firm foundation, unless your house is built on a solid rock, unless your spiritual house is built on Jesus Christ, you will perish. You'll be destroyed. So get saved today, ladies and gentlemen. If I can help you, you can contact me. You can call me at 404-205-1101. Send me uh, an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to pray with you. I'll be glad to listen to you, counsel you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'll be glad to show you what the Lord says in the word of God. I teach the Bible. Back to basics, online church, we teach the Bible, not somebody's thesis or somebody's uh, essay. We preach what thus saith the Lord. Well, bless God. All over Africa, we thank God for our friends all over Africa, Europe, Asia, uh, uh, Latin America, and across North and South America. We praise God for you. Be steadfast. Be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Well, we're going to sign off from Facebook now. Facebook friends, you can find me at Facebook on my Leroy Carter page or my Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated page. Hit me up. Uh, we uh, say goodbye to you and hope to hear from you this week. Amen. I want to know how this message has blessed you and be a blessing to someone else. And to all of my friends on the other networks, Thank you for tuning in. We had a good time. Praise God. We give tribute to Reverend Billy Graham, but we worship Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank God. We pause the, the, 